I'm giving an overview of microeconomic theory and of course what are we trying to do in microeconomic theory? We're trying to model people's behavior so we can do little thought experiments. Um, and oftentimes we like to look at real world data to help us inform our thought experiments in an organized way. And microeconomics allows us a very structured and very brilliant way of doing that. So this is going to be a quick overview and I like to think of there, there being three different styles of model even though these are all sort of the same model. So there's either you can maximize benefit minus cost or you can maximize benefit subject to a constraint or you can minimize cost subject to a constraint. Those are the three styles of model. Um, now the microeconomics textbook is organized according to the type of person or type of entity doing the maximizing. And there's three basic um, player types of players that can maximize. Okay, so we've got people who are going to maximize their utility, we've got firms who are going to maximize their profit, and we've got governments who are going to maximize social welfare. And of course, governments can be a smaller group of people. Um, it can be the student government organization. It can be a teacher maximizing the social welfare of her students. It's really any leader who's leading a group of people and trying to maximize the collective well-being of those people. Okay, those are the perspectives. They can utilize these models and we need some adjustments to our model to handle different situations and there's a few um, classic ways of adjusting our model. Actually, before I do this, let me just set up the classic model. Alright, so we have our classic model with its parts and of course if you're going to learn microeconomic modeling you want to be very proficient in understanding what are the different parts of a model so let's label these okay so we've got our more, we've got our uh, objective function which is the thing we're trying to maximize benefit minus cost in fact I should probably label the objective function the objective function is named very intuitively. You can ask yourself, what is this person's objective? What are they trying to accomplish when they're making these decisions? Um, the decisions have to do with the choice variable. That's the thing that the person or the government or the firm has control over. So choice variables, another very intuitively named part of our model. And then we've got our benefit and our cost. And our benefit, we know there's lots of types of benefit. There's utility, there's revenue, there's um, the utility of a particular person in a government, there's values like freedom and equality and um, uh, sustainability, all that kind of thing. Lots of different types of benefits. And even within utility, it's always useful to sort of break it down into different types of utility, self-esteem utility, um, utility over your finances, utility over your time, guilt, all that, well guilt I guess is a cost. So that then we can move over and we've got our cost and there's all types of costs. Costs can be financial costs, effort costs, um, time costs, lots of types of costs. And then we've got our exogenous variables and our exogenous variables when we when we change our choice variable and of course we know if we're gonna do these thought experiments we're going to be increasing and decreasing our choice variable. And when we do that, these exogenous variables are not going to change in response to that. They sort of come in from the outside and they'll influence, they're certainly going to influence the relationship between the choice variable and the benefit. But they may not, uh, they definitely will not respond directly when we increase and decrease our choice variable. And another way of thinking about benefits and costs are benefits are forces that will want you to increase your choice variable and costs are forces that will want you to decrease your choice variable. So we do know that we could have a situation where um, both the benefit and cost are positive but there's a negative relationship between C and X and that will lead to this um, that will lead to C still being a force that causes us to want to decrease the value of our choice variable. So that's just 
That's an overview of our classic economic model. And then we have a few ways that we might need to modify the model to account for certain things that happen in the real world. So what, what are those things? So one adjustment we might need to make is an adjustment to this to handle uncertainty. The fact that we don't know what the state of the world will be like and our utility may be different in different states. So the classic example here, probability that it's going to rain, which is 30%, times utility if it rains, which is negative 10, plus probability of shine, which is 70%. These two should generally add up to 100% times utility if it shines, which might be 20, and you simply multiply those together. And of course, you can build this into your objective function in many different ways. So that's how we handle uncertainty. The next thing we might need to figure out how to handle is time. So I'm just giving an overview, so I'm not going to go into detail about how this works, but we discount fut utilities that happen in the future because those utilities um, well, there's a lot of reasons we discount them in the future. Uh, the world could end between now and then. If we had money in the present, we could reinvest it. There's lots of reasons behind this, but discounting the future so that something received in two years is actually worth less from today's perspective than something received today. Um, that's one technique we have for handling the differences across time, and we're going to need to use that whenever we have time in our, uh, time entering in a meaningful way in our objective function. Another thing we might need to be able to handle is strategy or thinking about other people's thinking. So game theory is how we handle it when our decision depends on the decision of someone else, especially if we can think about the incentives that that person has and how our behavior will influence them and vice versa. Um, game theory gives us some solid grounding to think about how two people's strategies will interact with each other. And that can be built into these models. Um, that can be built into these models in a way that I think is beyond this video. Um, okay, one more thing we might want to add is just importance weights. So we might want to weigh our cost and benefit differently. So we can add importance weights as coefficients on any part of our model to make certain parts more salient or more important according to the person whose perspective the model is from. And then the last little piece in a quick overview of microeconomic modeling is just the shapes of these costs and benefit functions. Um, we're going to be thinking about those shapes at the margin. So there's going to be a classic benefit shape and a classic cost shape. These aren't the only um, shapes out there, but these shapes will help us think more deeply about what's going on. Okay, so benefits often have the property that they're diminishing at the margin. We have diminishing marginal utility. Utility is a benefit. Diminishing marginal product, where product is the output of the firm, and that's, of course, going to be a part of the benefit, part of the revenue function. Um, lots of things diminish at the margin. And then costs often increase at the margin. Um, so certainly opportunity cost will have this shape. Um, Financial costs may often have this shape, especially if it's the opportunity cost of investing is at play. There's lots of different situations where those shapes may be common. And even if these sh particular shapes are not at play, oftentimes the curvature in thinking about the relationship between the choice variable, which of course in this situation it's always going to go on the x-axis, the um, cost and benefit will go on the y-axis, Graphing these, there may be other shapes, this is another common shape, but thinking about those shapes at the margin and how they change as we move along the curve, that is a practice that economists like to engage in. And this set of tools can actually get you really, really far when it comes to modeling behavior. Um, so that's an overview of microeconomic theory in just a few minutes.